Welcome to another dimension, a dimension of insight, a dimension of understanding. You are entering a place where reality collides with truth. There are no limits, there are no boundaries. This is off planet radio. Okay, so, um, you know, one of the consistent messages I get is from people who ask me, when's Duncan going to be back on the show? And I go, <laughs> whenever he feels like it. So, you know, he feels like it. He's here. He's in the room. <laughs> and uh, from Houston, Texas, where he's presently encamped. Duncan Ophidian is here along with Emily Moyer. And um, we're going to... We're going to just kind of thread through whatever meme hits the airwaves right now. So welcome, Duncan. Well, hey, Em. Welcome. Hello. Hey, guys. So, uh, Duncan, it's been a while since we talked, and um, uh, you've kind of been in this this period of time of doing a lot of healing. You're, you're centered down in Houston. Um, let people know what you and Susan are doing and uh, what's going on in your part of this present dimension actually that's one of the things i wanted uh, to come on with you guys and talk about is some of the stuff that we're finding we're starting to see more and more of and it's a little disturbing um honestly i don't know how to describe what we do it just works um we deal mostly with uh entities uh, energetic in entities all the way up to full-blown full demonics. Uh, as a matter of fact, tomorrow we're going to try and chase uh, a demon out of this lady's house. Her father passed away two weeks ago and there was an amulet involved and the amulet got broken and released what was entrapped in it. So she's got a major situation. So that's going to be fun. The best way I can describe what Susie and I do is we scan the person, we find the problem, whether it's internal, physical, external, in their energetic field, which what most people call the aura. That's just the electromagnetic field that each and every one of us generate. And it is a shield just to keep these nasty things out. But over time, they can become weak. Uh, trauma, nutrition, uh, playing around with dark stuff, it weakens and weakens until finally something attaches on. Now, these are things that we've talked about a lot, but here's a situation that we're finding. Let's say you break your leg. That creates a physical trauma doesn't matter once the leg heals the trauma is still embedded in the genetic memory yes what we're finding <laughs> there are things starting to go after that physical trauma and to where it's literally becoming sentient normally from physical trauma slap a subtle night crystal on there i draw it out Susan does the body work, remodels the tissue, puts it where it should be, do the energy boost, bank client's fine. You walk away happy. You feel better, et cetera, et cetera. 
over the past couple of months, what we're finding is that these frickers are boosting already made trauma from an accident, whether it was physical, emotional, what have you, they're attaching onto that. And they're increasing the strength of that trauma and it's getting harder and harder to deal with. And so if anybody has any ideas on that, I am all ears because this is getting to be a problem. Um, well, we've talked about the thinning of the veil for a long time, and we know right yeah. now we're in like a major rip in the vortex. Oh, yeah. And I'm seeing a lot of people who are just talking about, you know, anything that happens in the spiritual dimensions cuts both ways. We've got a lot of people that are having very lucid dreams, dream states now. We are also seeing a lot of people who are discovering trauma, threading through old traumas, and basically it feels like the dark side is coming up. In a lot of cases, recovered memories are coming in. And you, you mentioned um, uh, the genetic retention of trauma, which is interesting because what we know, what we come to understand about genetics and DNA is that it is cellular memory on steroids. It's multidimensional from my perspective. Yeah. yeah. This is how we're threading through time and space. This is something that, you know, I, Emily and I've talked about it. We've talked about it on the show and it's a big topic. So to me, it feels like we're on the threshold of something and all of this is opening up. What do you see in your patients in terms of people who are presenting with recovering trauma at a level where you literally have to deal with the extent of, of like, let's say childhood trauma, uh -huh. physical injury and psychological injury. What's the spectrum on that? Well, with the childhood trauma, um, that's mostly satanic ritual abuse victims. Um, those are just nasty. I, I, let me give you an example. We had a lady come in that her calf was hurting. And we examined, we could not find any physical reason for it. She had been to the doctor, they could not find a reason. And trying to find the vocabulary to describe what I do. <laughs> You've seen me do this where I put my hand on it with a crystal. I kind yeah. of leave out. And I've seen the crystals after you've done it too. I've yeah. seen them turn black. That's, that's where we pull yeah. the, the, the energy out. Well, I connected with it and then she got the memory once I connected with it that she had been dog bit there as a child she had completely forgotten about being bit and for whatever reason the trauma in that area was starting to escalate to the point to where it was causing a real physical ailment but it was old trauma and this is what we're finding is that these new entities and that's exactly what they are to us they're new they're not demonics okay we dealt with demonics for years kick your asses, throw them away, you know, move on to the next one. These things are not demonic. They, in some cases, they defy a description. So this, is I, sound, uh, go ahead. this is, a, this sounds really interesting to me. I'm just going to, it's because some of what you're saying sounds so familiar. So, okay. So when the injury, ha so trauma is stored in the body. And a lot of times, like there's the injury, then the trauma is stored there. And then when the, it comes back up and people come to heal for you. That's when the memories return. That's how it works. I've been having this funky thing with my knee and I work with an energy healer and I've never had a knee injury in my life, but all of a sudden I ha I've been having this funny set of memories that like, I don't know where they come from. And the memories involve a knee injury that I don't recall in this present lifetime having had. And when he went to work on this, what he found, and he says he's been finding this lately, and this is a new thing. I've never heard him say this before, and I've been working with him for years, that he found there was a boric acid vortex there, and he says that, like, boric acid is something that, like, they, different entities, he deals with entities and creatures, and they like that. Like, that's like a funnel for them to sort of go there, 
And he's saying that even what he's finding is this boric acid is kind of everywhere all of a sudden. Like it's in food that, that shouldn't be in it, in food that is supposed to be like organic and stuff like that. Maybe it's part of something new that's added to the spraying compound, but that the boric acid is acting as a vortex for, uh -huh. that, for entities and energy to attach on to these kind of old, almost um, uh, scar tissue kind of uh, injuries. You're absolutely right. Uh, that's one of the, uh, the other things. We have conversations with um, other energy workers and whatnot, and we're all going through pretty much the same thing. And one of the consensus is is that some of the spraying with the chemtrails, what's in the food, the water, is putting chemicals internal and external that are giving these things food. Yeah, I always so feel latch like on easier. Yeah, I always feel like um, some of the metallic, and I, and I think I've t mentioned this before, some of the, particularly the things that have like metallic or certain kinds of qualities to them that they spray, they act like magnets for entity. Like, so remember when you were little and you played with Etch-a-Sketch or Magnadoodle and it would like, you'd have that pen that drag, dragged the magnetic particles around and yep. it would, you could form a face there. I feel like almost like for the entities that aren't able to incarnate in body, they're attracted <laughs> to these particles. And it's a way for them to sort of magnetize and almost take take temporary form in this dimension. Yeah, absolutely right on that. Uh, and the other thing that we're finding out too is there's much, much more physical, real time physical injury, trauma, uh, attachments that people are getting from astral travel. That's increased tremendously they're bringing all this back with them and that goes to what randy and i have been talking about for so long the thinning of the veil it's getting thinner and thinner and it's, it'll finally get to the point where you can't tell what's up what's down i i just had an idea do you think maybe because you said you mostly deal with demonics you know how to deal with those things certain kind of entities do you think what we could be looking at is like some kind of almost cloning of those kinds of entities and so we have something that is like some kind of weird replicated copy of a, of a typical kind of the, the more traditional kind of entity or demonic you're used to dealing with and because it's cloned it it, de it doesn't react the same because it's like a bot like a, 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 a generated version of it not the original like the way it behaves is not so it's like the difference between like an android and a human but but in the entity realm what do you think about that that's yeah that i can see um the possibility of that one of the other things too is the consensus with some of the people that i deal with is that these things don't belong here they're not from our realm they're what we're calling the outsiders they're like the new players in this game they they haven't been here before well maybe million you know a couple million years ago or something pushed away but these bad boys aren't supposed to be here so are we dealing with like quantum entanglement here in terms of? That's what Susan and I was actually discussing two o'clock this morning. Because <laughs> I think that's what's happening in a lot of cases. And, I, and this goes into heightened dream state as well. Um, even in my life right now, I'm finding things are carrying over from dream state into real state where line... It, I have had at least three occasions in the last six months where I've woken up from dream state and had the sense that I was still semi in that realm yeah. where the feelings, even the environment around me feels surreal, where it got harder to shake that. It feels like for whatever reason, whatever's going on right now, we are in a state of heightened quantum entanglement dimensionally. And, and, and it seems to run the spectrum from nightmares to these really incredibly beautiful visions. Uh -huh. So I'm thinking that along with that, if you just rip a hole in something, everything that's there comes out, good, bad, and the ugly. So... Well, and remember, when when you rip that hole, it's a doorway, and the door swings both ways. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. What's going on? Well, you and, and well, look, we this goes way back to what we used to talk about in some of the earlier shows and some of the predictions that we made about this time that we're in right now. Uh, yeah, I, I know. 
I'm wondering, despite what, you know, here's the problem. CERN has become such a huge meme now, and it's a tripwire, and I've tried to stay away from it. There are, it's all over the spectrum. There are people who say that CERN's been taken care of. There are people who are convinced that CERN is opening up more rifts. Now, from all appearances, CERN appears to be inactive and shut down right now. I don't even think that matters because I think it ran long enough to generate some real damage in temporal space time. What do you think? Let's update CERN. Uh, boy, that's a conundrum. Uh, I do have a little inside information that I'm not allowed. Your sound dropped out. Imagine that. Imagine yeah. that. Now everybody's sound dropped out. I'm here. I'm still here. Okay. I, I hit okay. mute. So don't, we can't hear Duncan. Can you hear us, Duncan? Mm, let's see what's going on. This is crazy. He's not. I'm trying, let me check and see if for some. There, there, hello? Boy, they have him blocked, man. He's not muted. I no. Don't, let's see. no. There we oh, go. Oh, there we are. What is going on? Yeah, it keeps coming in and out just for a second. As soon as he said CERN and something I can't talk about. Something they just I cut, can't talk about. They just cut yeah. it off. Okay, there we go. Now he's back for I'll a just, second. I'll just blurt it out. Yeah, CERN is still active. Yeah. It's on a standby mode. I do have some inside information from people on the ground there, and that's as far as that's, that's all I can say right now. Yeah. But Randy's right. It is a lot of the, the cause of what we've been talking about here you think and what about these and, and especially since they've kind of connected it to that d wave and the awake program is, is that like where we why we're experiencing this ramp up with all of this sort of mandela effect kind of thing and all that stuff yeah that's uh i haven't had enough time lately to keep up with a lot of stuff um but I can see where, well, this, this may get us kicked off. Um, with CERN causing the ripples that it does once it powers up to, I think it's 93%. Once it powers up past 93, 97%, it creates a ripple effect. And that plays havoc with dimensional shifts. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know a ton of people that have been going through tremendous deja vu moments yeah. over yeah. the past several months. Yeah. Do you think that these outsiders, these strange kind of uh, entities could be coming in from some of these realities and realms that these uh, Mandela effect type changes in timeline and, and memory are coming in from? So I do, yes. Absolutely, yeah. I do. Yeah. Uh, like Randy said, it created an opening, a doorway. Yeah. And I, I can say this with complete accuracy as well. There are wars going on right now that we don't see, that most people don't have a clue about. That's also having uh, the collateral effect that a lot of us are going through with the energetic entities, um, with, as you said, the Mandela effect, so on that's also playing havoc with us down here. So hurry up guys, get it done, get it over with. Talking about this, I wanted to pull this article up because I had bookmarked it. Um, this is hack.com, which is a, a, a tech security website. website. So this isn't, this isn't a, a woo-woo site. Um, they're talking about the D-Wave and it says, <laughs> They're talking about D-Wave in, in reference to Hugh Everett's Many Worlds interpretation of quantum physics. And what they're explaining about the D-Wave is that uh, it basically has the ability to access multiple parallel universes. Once they hit 1,000 qubits, it says that they can span a huge number of parallel universes. Um, the, the, the venture capitalist, Steve, this is a venture capitalist now. 
notes that Google bought the first D-wave quantum computers and Google researchers consider quantum computing a path to AI. So yeah. they're, they're, they're talking now, we're beyond Moore's law, which was that computing power doubled every 18 months. We're now at the place where it's so exponentially high that, that we can't calculate it on, on a linear scale. It, it, it's, it's, it's logarithmic. Have you yeah. seen those videos of Jordy Rose talking about the D-Wave computer and he's saying that when you go into the room where the server is for that computer, it's got like a heartbeat and it said he fe it feels like you're uh, praying to at the, the altar of an alien god. Yes. In the room. Oh, they store the well, yeah. Don Duncan, you and I talked about this last year. And one of the things that you said to me that was one of those aha moments was when you said, wouldn't this involve crystals? Uh -huh. My sense is that, well, a computer is a crystal. Basically, there's, there's the, 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 uh, the, the CPU processor clock runs off of a crystal oscillator. oscillator. So effectively, what we're probably looking at here is one massive freaking crystal resonator that is just ripping at incredible power levels now. That is a scary freaking thought. That's those kind. Of, that's the kind of crystals that when we talked with Kara St. Louis about the Fay and the Ferns, Randy, yeah. the the Ferns call those kinds of crystals force diamonds, and they, they, they can force action like that. Yeah, yeah. If, if they're used incorrectly, I'm looking for something. I'm in my work area, sitting in the floor. <laughs> well, just while you're doing that. Um, you know, this is actually, if we're, you know, led to believe the, the myths and legends about Atlantis, um, this was actually what occurred in, in Atlantis as well. And interestingly enough, somebody said something trippy to me, um, that Atlantis is a future event. So now, now we're yes. kind of in this, now we're kind of, because I thought about this a long while, because a lot of us have memories of Atlantis. What if, the f what if the future is folding over? What if some quantum effect is causing the future to fold over in a way that we're now interacting mm. with future state in present but state? But thinking it's past, but thinking yeah. it's a memory from yeah. our past when it's really from the future, absolutely. I right, so. which would actually go into the Mandela effect, which I hate. I hate the Mandela effect. It is actually... <laughs> You know, would we the Mandala the Mandala effect, which makes it far more interesting? Yeah, I agree. Um, this one's new. I burnt the other one, the other one up. This is what happens when this is just quartz. Uh, it's a pendulum. Mm -hmm. This is what we use as a dowsing tool to help locate the problems. As these things are used, they begin to get dark. Yep. As the energy is expended and it's pulled through. Now, I don't know if I can do this here. I know, Randy, you've seen this, but I think this will help explain what I'm, I have in my tiny little brain right now. Is when we do work over somebody, it starts with spinning this, mm -hmm. usually over the heart. What this does, it generates a vortex. And if you remember the uh, metal fans growing up with them, you lay down in front of them, you can hear sounds, voices, and mm. whatnot coming. You actually were hearing sounds yeah. and voices. Oscillation. Yeah. Exactly. This is what is going on right here. And normally, this one is laying over uh, the solar plexus, and it gets charged and goes in. And that's what we we call the you know the good air going in as one of us is on, on the other person with the left hand with something like this pulling is that out. Selenite? What is that selenite? We go through a couple of pounds of this a week. <laughs> and then one of the best ones that we use is this one. Is that rose quartz? Rose quartz. Yeah. It will hold more than normal clear quartz. Um, these are really good. Bloodstone. Mm. 
this is unpolished, so it's raw. But, but the point I'm trying to make is all these crystals, when you line them up in a grid, they communicate with each other. Yeah. So with that being said, if the hypothesis that we're talking about right here is correct, that there's set up one giant, huge crystal being controlled by an AI intelligence, what is the possibility of that connecting to all the crystals on the planet? Wow. Yeah, no, that's very interesting. It would be able to draw a planet-wide power source. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that, that opens up a whole other can of, <laughs> wow. Well, there are places on the planet um, that are built, I mean, that around here, I'm, I'm on a gigantic limestone ridge, but there are actually quartz deposits very close to the limestone bed in mm -hmm. this region. There are some places that are literally sitting on entire beds of quartz, which exactly. means that you now have a capacitor. Because what you just described there is actually a circuit. It's anode cathode, energy moving through a complete circuit. Right. But when you begin, if, these, if the, if the D-wave quantum is acting the way they say it is, we may actually be connecting not only interdimensionally, but intertemporal in terms of making these connections. Yep. It, you know, I, I, it gets so trippy after a while, you have to stop, take a deep breath, and, and think back on this. But if, if we're in a rep, rapidly escalating period of phenomenon, I believe then the prediction would be we should begin to see some things really ramp up as these, as these computers are ramped up, as what CERN has already done continues to reverberate. Because remember, all of this stuff reverberates out. I mean, you turn uh, a collider on, those yeah. particles didn't so stop spinning because the collider was shut down. No. Well, Operating. There's, there's, there's many other smaller particle accelerators and colliders all around yes. the world. Of that course, one in Austin, right? Austin. Yeah, there's yeah. one in Austin. There's one yeah. on Long Island. There, there's, there's, there's a bunch on of them. Long Island, yeah. There's a bunch of them everywhere. But you know what this is making me think of? <clears throat> when Duncan was talking about if it can connect to all the other kinds of crystals, um, when Dave Politis talks about the people going missing in national parks, and he talks about some of these areas that have found to have really high like mineral and crystal and uh, certain kinds of quartz granite con content in like the rocks there. Right, and then these people di disappear. Sometimes they reappear out times later, but sometimes they're just gone. Like, it's it's making me think of that. Like, if are these computers connecting to something way out in nature like that and creating dimensional and temporal rifts that people are absolutely disappearing into? Well, here's something else to to ponder. Since we know everything is connected in one way or another. And we also know that there are natural occurring portals on this planet. Yeah. So if CERN, well, okay, it's not a hypothesis. I'll just say what it is. It, it, it is a giant doorway. Uh, as that powers up, what is the possibility, and Randy and I have talked about this before, that it jumps across to the naturally occurring portals that's on the planet and it's firing those up, but they're at random. They're not rhythmic. Um, this yeah. is just a, a theory that uh, I discussed a couple of years ago with some people I worked with. They're basically, so, they create an arc, just like the arc yeah. you would get with an electrical field where current jumps I mean, yeah, we yeah. harness that. It's, it's interesting because you can harness an arc. I mean, you use an arc welder, which uses that same basic high-level capacitance theory, but now you're talking about something that, that may become wildly unpredictable. I mean, we're dealing yeah. with fields and dimensions here. And the thing is, one thing that is for sure, it is affecting the supernatural world. I've never seen the supernatural world in such an uproar as it is right now. I mean, uh, this, okay, this goes into the woo-woo just a little bit. Um, 
Yeah, like like you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Go when, super well. <laughs> when, when you have mortal enemies of different sets of beings that are now wanting to form an alliance oh, yeah. for mutual protection, you know something is bad. <laughs> Wow. And one of the other things that uh, a group that I worked with years ago, hello. This place is starting to get busy, sorry. Um, we were noticing that what we would do on jobs when we would be sent out to take care of supernatural stuff, i.e. demonics or possessions or things of that nature, tried and true methods stopped working. We had to start improvising on the spot. So something has shifted in the supernatural world. And this all seems to coincide with that um, machine that every time we talk about, we get frozen up. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. It kind of like is, it almost seems like describing the difference between like a human, like, virus or illness and one on a computer right like the one on the computer like that is a that kind of virus spreads really quickly and the way that we handle that and deal with that is differently than the way we deal with it when you or i get a flu right like it multiplies much quicker it allies with other things it spreads out and it replicates itself in a in a different kind of way than a human to human virus that's really interesting uh -huh. I just, go ahead go ahead randy no, I just keep going back to one of those early conversations we had where we talked about the, the, the original Ghostbusters movie. Not this piece of shit they made this year, but last year, but the original Ghostbusters, which basically depicted this rift that was being opened and all of the entities that were coming through and how there was an escalation and into the point where you began to get this whole... <sighs> this whole metaphysical morphing thing going on, you know? And, and I'm wondering, because it's never left my mind, that, you know, we know that entertainment cloaks truths in absurdities, comedy, and, you know, even these the action, action type films. But there's something there that feel, always felt like a truth to me yeah, about this rift opening up and what happens when you all of the right energies line up that on a, on a larger scale, on a, on, a, on, a, on a scale that's even beyond the, this plane itself, what we're seeing is probably a cascade effect as, as this plays out. Yeah, you're right. And we have to throw in there as well the, uh, what some people call the grand alignment hmm. that we are moving forward. And here's a little something else. You and I talked about this years ago that – our solar system would be moving into an energetic cloud through space. Well, I've been noting, and this was years ago. No, no one else was talking about it. There was nothing on the news about it, not anything, until I've started noticing over the past nine months, six months, somewhere along there, there's little science news blurbs about it. Started out, well, scientists have discovered a greenish cloud in space. Oh, we're not, it won't affect us for X number of thousands of years. Then the next news article is that, well, they've discovered this and it might affect. And then they said discovered this. And uh, then they, you know how they do with disclosure. They keep bringing it down a little more yeah. at a time. Um, this goes into prophecy, which I really don't want to do because prophecy is nothing more than a warning that can take place unless right. you take it's probabilistic uh, the consensus was some of the, the uh, people I was going to call them morons <laughs> that I deal with is that when <laughs> when you, they talk about the three days of darkness that is exactly where that will come from and that will be the total tearing asunder of the veil between here and there. Yeah, pause to ponder that for a minute. Oh, we're actually, is, go ahead. I was just gonna say the thing is we're rapidly moving to that point. 
and I it's getting to where people like us are going to have to really kick in the butt. Yeah, I'm talking about you too. <laughs> she walked in. I got to be good enough. Uh, <laughs> Is that Susan? Yeah. Hey, Susan. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you don't have to go. No, I'm not interrupting. Sorry. <laughs> Who's here? Oh, okay, okay. Ooh, boss ladies here. <laughs> um, I think to the end of this section, I think what I'm what I'm trying to get at is it's a, as crazy as it is now. It's about to get worse, and it's about to get real dangerous. And I think all and Randy, you know I love politics, but. I think all the political turmoil and whatnot that's out there right now, it's, it's, it's major distraction. Um, the, the snowflakes, the, all of this stuff is just distraction to keep us totally unaware of what's really going on. Of course, to realize what's really going on, you've got to be observant. You've got to look, you've got to open your mind up a little bit and people just don't want to do that right now. You know, as far as politics goes, I'm a political atheist. Yeah, I don't believe too. in any of them. I don't yeah, no, it's a, yeah. yeah, no. And the whole, that's all, it's, it's like religion, right? Like the whole, if the people stop believing it, maybe it would go away. <laughs> well, I, you know, on a surface level, what I think is the whole political thing, which we saw play out. And, you know, that was, that was a morality play in process. Um, but I think it, it, it was kind of a, a, a snapshot of humanity right now and how it's trying to grapple with forces of good and evil, but they're doing it from a level that doesn't affect any, anything that would be real change. This just, this just polarizes and stratifies the attention on a low level when in fact we can't get people to move off the dime beyond the political side of this is the, uh, the system itself isn't salvageable it's yeah. you know are you it's uh, you know whatever donald trump manages to do or not do it would be a band-aid on, on a gaping wound exactly and and you know so all the people who polarize themselves over this over hillary clinton the whole pizzagate thing which is a smoke screen uh, it is. were simply they they were simply focused on on a low level of activity that's not going to going to affect them w what i think we've been talking about is largely that this is actually a separation of worlds that you know the people who quote get it are the people who are doing the work on a larger scale and the larger scale isn't so much the outward expression as the inward emanation of all these things which goes on a personal level and then it goes emanating out and all the other things that we're dealing with everything that we want to deal with right now we have to deal with on a, on an inner level which is a higher frequency yeah absolutely and that and that kind of cascades into um an argument I had <laughs> a couple of days ago with a so-called uh, light warrior, light worker. <laughs> uh, yeah, when you really <clears throat> do the stuff that we all do, what you guys do, what Susie and I do, and, and on and on, you get beat up, and you get beat up bad, and you suffer for it. So when I see someone driving a $100,000 car and they, you know, they remind me of the TV evangelists that get up and just want to raise their hand and heal everybody, and have people praise them. Yeah. Now, when you when you truly do something to metaphorically kick the darkness in the nads, it punches back. That's right. It hits yeah. back. So when you really, the, the better you try to be, the better person you try to be, the more good you try to do, the more it comes after you and the more you get beat up. 
That doesn't mean you can't walk away for a while and take a break. I mean, we, we, well, we haven't had one in three months. Wow. Seven days a week for three months. Uh, and re real quick, Randy, remember uh, about three years ago, uh, Deb made a comment about about Stu working with us working together and that as good as she was then what she'd be like in a couple of years with yeah yep tell her she was absolutely correct yeah she's kind of scary <laughs> mouth off as much as I used to <laughs> So what you're doing, <laughs> tell, can we see Susan? Will she, she pop in and say hi? She's okay. running the front. I will okay. grab her and come back. Okay. Um, so I guess for right now, we're, we're kind of in this, this slow uptick, but I'm thinking we've got this year to me feels like make or break. Yeah. for a lot of things. When we did our first show for the year, Emily and I did a podcast and we called it Cut the Cards. And what I said was last year we shuffled the deck. This year we were going to cut the cards. It feels to me like this is the year when we make the decisions. Like I really seriously think this is the line right now that's been drawn. It is. It is. Um, trying to get her back here. <laughs> Yeah, I was talking to a friend last night, like it feels like there has been this like line, this separation, and there's those of us who have sort of, in many ways, moved, pa moved past the current paradigm, and we're just sort of sitting here trying to, there's like still a few stragglers that can sort of come along our way, but it's going to be, we have to sort yeah. of put all that stuff in play this year, and by the end of this year, we have to be really off and moving in the direction that we're going, otherwise we're going to get pulled, sucked back into, you know, the craziness that uh, people who can't get out of the political paradigm, the social paradigm that we're in now, that they're all just stuck in and that's where all the chaos is. Well, one of the things I, we do deal with some really amazing people, uh, some really, really excellent psychics. And I, I use that term in a very narrow focus. Um, John Capella and I were actually having a uh, in-depth conversation last night with what's going on in this field um, might get into that, but some of these people are truly amazing. And what I find with this is even when they're not connected with each other, they're all seeing the same thing. Yeah. That this is going to be a good year and a terrible year yeah. and yeah. all at the same time. This you're right. This is the year. Everything becomes completely polarized financially people who were really strapped are going to have some decent success but at the same time that in itself is going to be a distraction yep um and randy and i have talked about this you know years ago if you you know if you give a gangbanger a million bucks well you got you got a millionaire gangbanger <laughs> if if people's minds and hearts don't change it doesn't matter if, if you got ten dollars or ten million dollars. You know, if you're you're an asshole, you're still an asshole. That's right. Money money just increases your uh, in quantumly the kind of person you are. <laughs> the level of assholeness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a, it's the it's the great quantum multiplier. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 It it's also a good insulator. You know, you can, you, if, if, if you use it properly, you know, I look at finances as nothing more than a means to an end and a tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing more. I mean, the only tool I have that's actually a friend of mine is, <laughs> is Roscoe. <laughs> Roscoe. <laughs> Everything else is just, just a tool. You know, crystals come and go. I'm not one of those people that gets attached to a crystal. 
they break. They and with good they reason, break. too. I've, I've seen them. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a tragedy for you if you were attached to your crystals, Duncan. You'd be sad all the time. <laughs> oh, I know. And this is something uh, something else some of us were talking about. You know, what, what, what what's going to happen if, let's say, they do actually open the, a portal to hell and leave and let some of the things out? Let's see. Well, I got to find some place to run to because half of them are there because I put them there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be here when they, that happens. There's I'm probably trying. some people here, though, with that when they open the door to hell, they'll gladly run to hell. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I can go home now, yeah. <laughs> well, and here's the other thing about CERN that Randy and I talked about. I'll throw this out and I'll shut up about CERN. For CERN to be effective in doing what we hypothesize it's going to do, it has to have a contact point on the other side. Right. There has to be something there for it to connect to. If not, it just goes out into space on and on and on and on and on for affinity until the energy finally dissolves and there's nothing left. It's like light. There has to be same or similar at the connection point. And that gets into a whole realm that we don't have time to do. <laughs> Duncan, do you think that point is in an astral or ethereal place, or do you think it's deep inside the ground? And that's why that CERN is located where it is. It's I think it's interdimensional. You think it's interdimensional? Yeah. I think it's interdimensional. Yeah. Yeah, I have to wonder if, you know, what the scientists so called talk about in terms of the public, if they actually practice and believe that, because the more we look at this, we're going. We've been taught a model of the way things work. And specifically here, I'm talking about, quote, space. <clears throat> that I don't think is a working model. I think it's the reverse of everything that they've said. In terms of even, you know, I'm not talking here about flat earth, round earth, all of that. I'm talking about inversions of geometry and how things operate on a quantum level where we basically are externally directed to upward and outward rather than yeah. downward and inside. You know, what is it? We said, Emily, on one of the shows, um, the way out is to go in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they always want to, everything they do, whether it be about space, whether it be like the way that they're directing this whole like, a uh, transgender thing in society as opposed to people becoming just, you know, comfortable with their own inner male and female characteristics, their divine mask, their divine sentiment. They want everything to be externalized, focus on what's outside of you because the truth is only inside. So if they can keep us completely distracted with putting everything out there as opposed to, you know, letting us explore it for ourselves inside, that's where the answers are. The answers are all inside, it, you know, the, and that's the only way um, out of the of, out of this matrix, and that's the last place they want every people to go is in because then they're going to get out. Um, if you guys uh, want to have a little fun, make one of these and have somebody sit down, hold this about six inches at the crown of the head, mm -hmm. and it will spin on everyone. That's mm -hmm. the connection. That is our mind connection to the above. Yeah. And, and some people, it's very few. We found very few. They don't have it. It's closed. And these are what we call walking zombies. Yeah. They're just like. Oh, yeah. No, we've been talking about this, about the fact that potentially some percentage of what walks around here isn't, isn't human. We found a few. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of the first things we first things we do. <laughs> Heavy scan, you human or not. <laughs> you know, where you from? I wanna see a passport on you. Do you do you think that the number of those types of individuals is increasing? And I do. And do you think 
do you think we're dealing like, I think that there's two things. I think we're dealing with some things that were never human and then some things that were human, but somehow gave their humanity away and allowed something in that completely took them over. Yeah. With the rampantness of SRA, the uh, satanic ritual abuse, and uh, also as it ties into the military industrial complex with governmental CIA, NSA, et cetera. Oh, by the way, Rand, I did get a phone call from the NSA last week. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I didn't answer it, but uh, I did a, a search on the name on the uh, the phone number. <laughs> it went through. Uh, that was fun. I called them back and got a recording. Um, <laughs> Robo call from the NSA. Yeah. <laughs> You're on there, Rolo Jackson. The um, a lot of these, you know, is and I think rightfully so. We're calling them uh, zombies or deadheads. These could very well have been people. It may not be their fault, and by that I mean they may have been born that way. If they come from an SRA family, they could have been concentrated at the moment of conception because they've got this stuff down to a fine science yeah and if, if they were concentrated at the moment of, of conception they could very well and this is something that a lot of us have been debating be born what we call soulless yeah concept no, I, i've I, heard before i heard it in christian deliverance as a matter of fact and that's an area where i felt like some of the guys who were working in that area got it right. Um, there's, there's a field in deliverance ministry in Christianity that's called soul retrieval, which yeah. basically, you know, re-sanctifies and reconnects the soul back into the entity itself. Now, there's a couple of, there's a couple of postulates to all of this, and one is that the SRA separates the soul. It does, not dis it does not destroy the soul. So the soul still sits outside of it, attempting to reconnect back yeah. to the physical entity. Whereas the other side of this is, and this is the interesting part to me, what I sort of discovered was that there are literally beings who are nothing more than software programs. They are literally background programs walk on actors in a script that's running in a reality stream virtual reality system so yeah. you know if you sit in a I, I do this as an exercise i sit in the mall and and basically aura gaze for about an hour just watching people as they're going by and one of the stunning things is where you see a complete blank on people like i blank the physical body out this is uh -huh. kind of astral viewing an attempt to discern is there light there because our bodies put off light a living soul has a light component to their being correct so you know the concept of soul retrieval is basically to reconnect back in which is a connection that specifically satanic ritual abuse and any type of traumatic splitting of the consciousness traumatic mind control would affect but it's recoverable because the two things are still there. They just seem, need to be reconnected. Whereas yeah, some of these, go ahead. No, I was going to say we've actually uh, accomplished that twice. Nice. And it is not pretty. It is not pretty. And it's hard on all parties involved, but you're absolutely right. It is doable. And it needs to be done a lot more. The problem is when this is done and these people want to speak out about it, they're shot down so quick, so hard. And they've already been abused all most of their lives with it. And most of them just want to try and live with a little bit of peace. But there are some that do want to shout the rooftops about it. And then they, they get harassed, shot down, and they will always have that slight, however small it be, they will always have that connection to that group. It'll always be there. 
what we found out as we've been working with these people is that it diminishes over time. Once they reclaim their soul, reclaim their innocence, it begins to diminish. But we have, have yet to hear one of them say it's gone completely. They always say it's yeah. faint. It's in the background. Yeah. No, I'm thinking of somebody specific that I know when you're speaking about this. And yeah, I would, just, I would agree that that's sort of how it is. Need to get a bigger group together yeah. <laughs> and do this. Yeah, well, we're working on a platform that's going to enable us to do that because, you know, we've tossed a lot of topics out over the course of the last 50 some odd minutes. I know we have limited time today because of your work schedule. But that's one of the things that we're working on right now, because going back to what I said earlier, in a, in a sense, what we feel here is that the need to speak to the so-called general public out there is over. Yeah. Um, we're going to pull off of YouTube, Facebook, except to use them as a conduit for publicizing certain things. Um, I've termed it the ones who count, meaning, and I don't mean it as an elitist statement, but basically past a certain point, it's pearls before swine in terms of putting the level of information out that we want to do next, which is exactly yes. what you and Susan are doing right now. So, well, and, and yeah, and getting off the form of social media like that, except it is right. I mean, all anybody's got to do is read the comments of stuff that we do. I mean, come on. I mean, it, it's, it's beyond disgusting. Yep. Yeah, no, and I, yeah. I admit there have been times with some of these people doing the comments, I've had fun with them. <laughs> you know, I'll reply back and, and push their buttons and, and get them going. But there's no time for that anymore. No. Yeah. You know, I'm to the point where I don't care yeah. what they said. I mean, they've even gone to the point of saying, you know, I have a mail or a mail order bride, you know, I went somewhere and brought this child back and you know, and they go on and on and on and on. But and it they it gets really right down vulgar. You know? Yeah. And if that's the game people want to play, then I'm sorry, you're gonna get chewed up in the end. Because I said this before, I took an oath many, 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 many years ago to do this stuff. And I don't care how nasty of an individual you are, your soul is still precious. It's your soul. It's still pure energy. And that always has the chance to be redeemed. You personally, I don't care. If you want to be that yeah. kind of person, be that kind of person, reap what you sow, get your ass kicked when I get close to you. That's fine. But your soul is all I care about. Yeah. The, the whole thing, I mean, especially on YouTube, it's like the fucking wild west of troll nonsense. But I just, these people who like, when I don't like a video, I just turn it off and move on to the next video. These exactly. people, these people who feel, who like create these entire, like, it's, it's like a reflection of the wars we have in the world. These things in the comment section, if you don't like what someone's saying, turn it off, dude. I move on. Like, I don't understand. And it, I, obviously, we know it's a program. It's, you know, that it, it isn't just occurring on an organic level for the most part. So, you know, although there is some people who are just naturally assholes and they'll enjoy that. But yeah. uh, the whole thing is such a colossal waste of, uh, of energy and, and, and time. And people's souls get totally caught up in that. You're absolutely right. They do. Um... Well, like, real, real quick, I'm getting texts like crazy, wanting to know where am I working today, where am yeah. I sitting. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I set the room up. You got desk, you got tables, you got chairs. Put them where you want them. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> going back really quick before I jump off here, with uh, being hit and attacked when you really do this work, I sent Randy a, uh, a picture a few days ago of where I got hit in, in the side. Yep. And that was a straight up black magic type attack. And it was about the size of a baseball, nearly perfectly round right in my, in, in the rib cage. And it just bam. And I'm still getting some of that out. Wow. Huh. Yeah. We've all gotten hit. If you do this for any period of time at all, Emily knows this. She was warned. 
um, you're going to get hit. And, you know, some of it's near fatal, but um, we don't, we don't take it seriously in terms of moving off of our mark, but we will lock and load on perps. So, yeah. And, and there are times you just have to circle the wagons and yeah. shield up and rest. Yeah. You have to. Because that's the idea. They hit and hit and hit until you can't defend. Then they move in. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Well, my friends, yeah, I can't uh, spend an interview and not be a ranting, raving lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you've been very, very sedate. This has been a, an excellent conversation. Anything else you want to toss out before we uh, we uh, go off today, Duncan? Uh, not that I have time for. We can do okay. a part two in a few days if you guys okay. want. Okay. Right. Cool. Cool. Excellent. Well, thanks right. for coming on. We'll get this out because I know that there are people out there who have said you know we want to see duncan back so here you go guys <laughs> thanks guys it's gonna wrap it up for now we'll be back with another one real soon this is off planet radio off planet tv truth is out there <laughs>